Hello, everyone, and welcome to our course on the Nintendo Entertainment System, or the NES, or the NES, or the Nintendinho, as we used to call it back when I was a kid in Brazil. My name is Gustavo Petsi. I teach computer science and mathematics here in London. And whenever we teach computer architecture, it is very easy for us to get overwhelmed with all the complexity of these modern machines that we see nowadays, right? We have complete servers with this whole comprehensive operating systems that run on top of the servers. The operating system itself has this huge complex API that we need to master in order to communicate with the hardware. So there is this huge distance between the programmer and the actual circuits, right? And the hardware that we are manipulating. This is an opportunity that we have to really go back to the basics of digital computers. Right? The NES is this very rudimentary, very simple machine that it is inside a box, and we cannot get away from what is inside that box. We're going to take a look at all the electronics, all the components. We're going to break the NES apart. We're going to take a deep look at the main board, the processor, the CPU, memory, the dedicated chips that send signals to the TV set. So we are going to break this thing apart. We are going to understand the hardware, the electronics. And of course, after we are done, we are going to learn how to program for the NES, right? Because this is what we're here for, right? We're going to understand how these things work. But then as programmers, we want to go and poke values, make things move inside the NES and, of course, in the screen. So we are going to take a long, fun journey understanding all the elements of the NES, understanding how we read input from the joypad, how we process that input, how do we display sprites, display tiles in the screen. We are also going to learn how to load background level information, compress data, optimize, reduce the memory footprint that we have. It is going to be a long, long journey where we're going to try to cover as much as possible from this whole art that is programming for the NES. Right? The NES is in the third generation of game consoles. Right? You will see that people talk about the first generation, the second generation. We are entering the third generation of home consoles right? with the NES, the Sega Master System. So all these home consoles that were either part of your childhood or part of the whole history of video games. Right? So for us to start thinking about the NES and thinking about the whole roadmap that we're going to follow, this is my plan. We are going to start, of course, taking a look at the history, right? I want to put things into historical context because we need to understand, we need to position ourselves in this whole timeline of the development of video games, understand the history of Nintendo as a corporation, understand the history of all the elements until the development of the NES, so we understand the motivations, both business motivations and, of course, technical motivations that led to the development of this box that we have in front of us. And after we understand the history and we position ourselves in this whole timeline, we are going to break things apart and understand hardware, right? I want to look at the hardware. We need to look at the cabinet, the console. We need to look at the cartridge because these two things are going to work together, both console and cartridges, right? The cartridge also has some important technologies we have to look at. There is character, ROM, right? The tiles, the graphics. There are so many things that go inside each cartridge, each game. There is a lot of beauty when it comes to these ideas of the evolution of cartridges and evolutions of games throughout history. So we're going to try to understand a little bit as well how Nintendo and how the developers try to accommodate these ideas of having an evolution where as years went by, we have better and better, better games, right? And after we take a look at the hardware, since we are going to understand the actual electronics, right? The digital signals that flow across the machine, then we are going to start programming for the NES. Super simple, we're going to go bottom up, where we're going to start creating our first lines of assembly code, which assembly code is going to be how we are going to instruct the processor, the 6502 variant that we're going to find inside the NES. So we're going to learn 6502 assembly programming. And for that, we are going to start super slow. We are going to take a look at our first lines of code, we're going to take a look at the instruction set to 
uh, load values, store values, increment, decrement, compare, flip bits, shift things left, shift things right. It is going to be a super beginner-friendly introduction into the world of assembly language programming, right? So we need to take a look at all these ideas behind assembly instructions. We're going to look at an assembler to help us with that, right? So we're going to take a look at this assembler called CA65, which is part of this whole suite of development tools for the NES called CC65. So we are going to use a powerful assembler, a macro assembler, to go and build, right? Create this executable, this ROM, this read-only memory, which is basically our cartridge, right? We're going to have and we're going to simulate the development of a Nintendo Entertainment System cartridge at the end of our programming flow. And as soon as we have the cartridge, how do we run that? Well, there are two options, right? You either go and you write that ROM with an EEPROM writer and you create an actual chip, and then you go and you manufacture that chip, but we are not going to do that for every example. We are going to use an emulator, right? Or a simulator that is going to simulate as if it was the NES for us. So we're going to go, compile, load, create that ROM, that cartridge for us, and then we are going to run that cartridge in the emulator simulating what the 6502 would do in a real hardware for us. So we're going to look at this emulator, we're going to learn how to debug step by step, line by line of our assembly code, and as soon as we get more familiarized and we get more comfortable with this whole assembly code programming, then we're going to evolve and we're going to start talking about usually displaying graphics with the NES, right? Graphics on the NES is this beautiful, beautiful topic where we're going to learn all the intrinsic details that go into displaying pixels on the screen. If you come from the second generation of home consoles with the Atari 2600, where everything was extremely rudimentary, right? We had to go and send instructions as the electron beam was rendering the scan lines. Now we are going to go up in the abstraction stack and we're going to use the help of something called PPU chip, right? The picture processing unit chip, which is the chip responsible for sending the correct signals to display a frame in the television, right? Frame per frame, let's say 60 times per second to display the pixels, the colors, and render our final frame in the screen, right? So this is the picture processing unit. We are going to learn how to display character tiles, background tiles. We are going to learn how to scroll because, let's face it, most NES games, they have these effects of scrolling background, right? If you're talking about Super Mario Bros, or if you're talking about Mega Man, or if you're talking about Double Dragon, they all have these ideas of loading background information and scrolling background information. We're going to take a look at that as well. We have quizzes, we have exercises, we have this whole course that is aimed at us understanding what the NES really does and all the power that we can squeeze out of the NES, right? Speaking about power that we can squeeze out of the NES, uh, by the end, right, after we start getting more used to programming and understanding all the little nuances that go into programming the NES, we need to start talking about actually squeezing everything that we can out of the hardware, right? Because we don't have enough processing power or memory to spare. Right? We're going to have to take a look at every CPU clock cycle that we can use. We're going to have to take a look at optimizing our memory footprint so we have actually space to store all the level information that we can inside our cartridge. Right, We don't have the luxury of wasting space or wasting processing power, so we're going to have to really take a deeper look at how do we compress level information, how do we encode game data inside the cartridge in an optimal way so we can just go and generate level information. So it's going to be a fun ride. We're going to take a comprehensive, long, right? we're going to take our time, savor this time that we can to understand everything that is going on with the Nintendo Entertainment System, especially when it comes to 6502 assembly programming. Gustavo, do I need to have any 6502 experience or even experience programming for retro computers? Absolutely not. This course is going to be self-contained, so even if you have no experience programming, I would say, even if you never programmed before, you will be able to follow along and understand the beauty that it is programming for the NES. I'm super excited. I'm very happy that we are starting this journey. So let's do that. Let's begin by looking at the history of the NES or the history of the Nintendo.